I'm going to call Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I can't believe that I'm standing here tonight saying that I've actually uh, agreed with two speeches <laughs> by the ACT member, David Seymour, but I have. So, <laughs> here we go. You've been there before. <laughs> Strange times. Um, but um, nevertheless, um, uh, while, while there is agreement on broad principle around wh what is good law and what isn't good law um, on the balance of things, uh, we are supporting this bill at the committee stage, but we are, as um, you have heard tonight, Mr Chair, uh, uh, very concerned about certain things. And I, I'm just going to just briefly um, touch on what I described earlier as the missing voices um, in, the, in the debate around this legislation, and that is the voices of young people and the people who advocate for young people and, um, and the message from, that is starting to build and come from them that, it, that cyberbullying won't be beaten by punishment alone. And I want to refer to um, a group called Sticks and Stones, which is a student-led digital citizenship project which is actually based in central Otago which is probably quite chilly at the moment. I would imagine it was minus four degrees at Dunedin Airport this morning just for everyone's information and I imagine it's much chillier there. But they um, are quite heated around this issue and quite exercised around it because they're teenagers and they're teenagers who have first-hand experience that words can hurt and be hard to escape. And they have a message, and that message is, is that penalties like fines or even jail seem more like a scare tactic than a solution, which, while they might stop people from cyberbullying out of fear in the short term, they are highly unlikely to change the mindset of bullies. And I think this just really reinforces what my colleague Jacinda Ardern said before, is that it's the peer group where the work needs to be done. Uh, and it's not just the peer groups of teenagers, uh, although that is pretty important because teenagers go on to become adults and, and learned behaviour, um, but it's the peer groups where people are active in online communities. And my colleague David Parker earlier in this debate referred to the forums in, on Trade Me. Which is, um, which is one of the areas where there is a lot of cyber abuse and where I know Trade Me is very concerned and keen to have the safe harbour provisions in this legislation implemented so that they feel um, uh, um, to be protected from uh, defamation case, cases and from, from liability. Uh, but the peer group behaviour and the role of the ISP, I mean, the, the fact is that everyone along the line has to take some responsibility. And legislation alone, particularly badly bad law, and parts of this law which we do consider to be um, bad and badly written, um, is not actually going to address the problem. Um, Mr Chair, um, we, uh, we've touched on um, the criminal provisions on a number of occasions tonight. We've touched on the safe harbour provisions and the, the fact that, that the perhaps unintended consequence of this legislation is actually going to prolong the issue, legally prolong the issues for cyber uh, offensive, um, uh, un, um, uh, bullying tactics, um, intimate photos, uh, abuse, etc., to be able to be legally kept online for longer periods of time um, before they can actually be addressed. Uh, 48 hours plus 48 hours is a long time for information to go viral and to have huge ongoing effects on victims, and yet this is what this law does. Those things, are, again, are things that are going to bring this legislation back to the House. Um, the other matter which hasn't been mentioned tonight, Mr Chair, is, um, is the lack of, um, uh, of, of a defence of um, public interest. And the, and the impact that this law may have on our, on our media. 
Mr Chair, um, this is actually a critical issue and one that again, Mr Chair, clear, um, is, is actually going to have ongoing ramifications and um, despite um, the Law Commission's uh, work that was done, despite I think there's been a lot of submissions to the committee that were on this matter, the Minister refused to include an exemption for media in, um, in this piece of legislation, which meant that there therefore is no specific public interest defence which can be used in a mediation or a district court process, which is what the Law Commission recommended. And I think that this is probably one of the, the glaring, um, again, the other glaring gaps or, or gaps of omission in this law is that uh, is is what is what it, what is going to be the impact on free speech, and I and I think the act member over there would no doubt um, again uh, ag uh, agree with the position being taken tonight. It is that the is that the um, is that in the the haste to try and put in place um, what I know was described um, I think somewhere else in the house tonight as as potentially knee jerk to try and deal with this issue, that the, one of the consequences could be on one of the core parts of our democracy, which is free speech, and on media, and on, um, on satire, and irony, uh, on cartoons. How long is it going to be before we have a, uh, a religious uh, cartoon that is, uh, ends up in the district court? Uh, a media organisation ends up in the district court defending its right to publish a cartoon that has offended a group of people. Now, this is New Zealand, this is, you know, 2015, um, but it feels that if, if that is the direction that we're going in, then we're going backwards uh, in terms of our democracy and our free speech. And this is not meant to be the intention of this piece of legislation, according to the Minister. And she said very publicly on The Nation in, in an interview at the weekend that that wouldn't be the, um, the outcome, but she couldn't point to where in the legislation that, that there would be a defence, because there is no defence. There's no public interest defence. There's no ability to defend on the basis of free speech. And I just, Mr Chair, just uh, want to, to re reference um, an example which was provided by Tech Liberty, who was one of the submitters on the, um, on the bill, who posits the example of a photographer who captures a politician taking a bribe and posts the photo on the internet. And by exposing the corruption, he knows he will cause the politician serious distress. In such circumstances, now it may not necessarily even be a politician, it could be a businessman, it could be whoever, but that person no doubt will suffer distress having that photo published. In such circumstances, the law regards him as intending that outcome. Surely his is an act we ought to encourage, not punish, yet under this bill, it would be a crime to which the law affords no defence. Now that is deeply trouble, troubling and that should not be the impact on this, of this legislation, but unfortunately we are going to see more cases like this, we believe, um, uh, it, it, issues coming forward that will seriously test whether this legislation uh, works or not. We know that cyberbullying is an important issue. I think everybody in this House knows the impact of that, particularly on young people, the publication of intimate material, um, of, of deeply damaging material. We need to have measures to deal with them. Having an approved agency in place is a very important part of those measures, but there are so many glaring gaps in this piece of legislation that we know it's going to have to come back to this House to be fixed. Mr. Chair, uh, Jamie.